Hello friends, this reflection is for the 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time. It is hard to believe that we're really digging deep, you know, as we're approaching the end of or we're approaching the end of Ordinary Time and Advent will be upon us. So, I really have to admit, I always geek out when my favorite theme, but my favorite gospel with the theme centered around repentance surfaces. All for the all for the right reasons, folks. Okay. Now, let's let's dissect it a little bit. So what we kind of notice is that we're like scratching our heads, wondering like, well, what does the first reading and the second reading have to do with the gospel according to Luke? This is the same case scenario last week, but I think if we have to look at it a little deeper, we look at the book of wisdom, and wisdom, of course is filled with so with so much wise sayings just as much as proverbs i think what we see here is that towards the end we see that there is therefore you rebuke offenders little by little warn them and remind them of the sins they are committing that they may abandon their wickedness and believe in you o lord that's the, the closing line from that first reading. Then when we look at the letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. In the opening we see that we pray for you that God may make you worthy of, of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith. That the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. That's basically what the whole point of the gospel is. You see, friends, repentance is not just a one and done thing. Instead, it's a daily commitment. I think in a great analogy to really think about repentance is that of the athlete. If you want an athlete to be elite, you want them to be an all-star, you want them to in time maybe be breaking records, breaking barriers, whatever the case is, the first thing they need to do is they have to keep practicing. This is the same case for us. You know, if we want to grow in holiness, we have to detach ourselves from sin, detach ourselves from this world, and attach ourselves to the world that is to come. For us. When we look at the example of Zacchaeus. He sees the face of Jesus. And his soul prays that you have mercy on all and you overlook people's sins that they may repent. You see friends, when Jesus went over to Zacchaeus' house for dinner. He extended that mercy. And of course you have the the Mr. Know-it-all and biblical scholars that say, Oh, you're dining with a sinner. He's a tax collector. Now you have to understand one thing, friends. Tax collectors, they, they had it made, especially in, the, especially in Jerusalem. Because keep in mind, Rome had... You know, their territory went as far as present-day Turkey. And the tax collectors, they made it well. They had got cl good clothing out of them, what have you. But I think what it boils down to is, is the fact that, just like the gospel, just like St. Matthew, both of them had the same occupation. But we also see here, it very common in the Gospels is that, but well, mostly in, in Luke, we're kind of seeing here. We kind of see in the theme of repentance, and there's, in, there's a reason for that. The reason we hear the theme of repentance is that Jesus preaches more about hell than he does about heaven. As we were reminded previously, that he didn't come... 
to bring unity, but he came to cause divisions. And let's face it, we're kind of seeing it right now. Now, do we run and hide? Do we get scared? No. But instead, friends, what we see here in this passage from Luke, especially in this account about Zacchaeus yearning to see Jesus, we too must repent. St. Jose Marie Escriba reminds us that a saint is a sinner who keeps trying. In order for us to keep trying, we must continue to receive the sacraments. We must continue to pray. We must continue to make an effort to go to holy hours. We must go to confession. We must receive Jesus in the state of grace, of course. But I think if there's one more thing that is very important, is that they daily ask God for forgiveness. And we extend that forgiveness. We extend his mercy to others. So friends, are we ready to, to repent of our wickedness? Are we ready to heed God's call? Are we ready to accept his mercy and extend his mercy to others? To the one that's living in the same sex lifestyle, repent. To the one who is engaged in the culture of death. You can be redeemed through God's mercy and grace. All you must do is walk away. Repent and believe in the gospel. God bless.